Hi, and welcome to today's lesson on the unit circle. For those of you who are in pre-calculus or calculus, you can probably appreciate how important it is to know the unit circle well in order to be able to find the corresponding points for your sine and cosine values of these different radian measures. So today I'm going to show you a good trick for being able to memorize all of those values relatively easily. And we're going to start now by looking at just the first quadrant of our unit circle, which goes from 0 all the way up to pi over 2. And we see the radian measures listed here in our chart and marked on the circle. It goes from 0 to pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, all the way up to pi over 2. And that corresponds to degree measures of 0 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees, for those of you who like to think in degree mode. But for today, we're going to be talking about these in terms of their radian measures. So for our sine values and for our cosine values, the easiest way for us to memorize what coordinate points correspond to the sine of 0, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, and pi over 2 is to use this little trick. First, we put everything over 2 in each location. Now some of these we can reduce later on, but for right now we're going to start by listing everything over 2, and then the trick to memorizing it is if you start with your sine values, and I personally prefer sine because it counts upwards as you go from 0 to pi over 2. And I think that intuitively that makes a little more sense for us to go in numerical order counting up. So let's take a look at how this works. You're going to have a square root on each one. And you're going to start with 0. And you're going to simply count your way up one number at a time. Square root of 0, square root of 1 root 2, root 3, and root 4. So we count our way from 0 all the way up to 4 when we plug in those sine values. Now your cosine values are going to do exactly the opposite. You're going to start with 4 and you're going to count your way down. Or you can start with 0 at the bottom and count your way up. But either way it's going to look like this. Square root 4, root 3, root 2, root 1, and root 0. Now some of you who have been given the unit circle to memorize in class might be looking at the chart that we've created and saying to yourselves, well that doesn't look like the exact values that we had to memorize. And that's because some of these values we can now reduce in order to find the corresponding value that matches up at each point. But if we write in this chart, this is the best way for us to memorize that material quickly because your sine values just go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 in the numerator and your cosine values go root 4, 3, 2, 1, 0 in the numerator. So it's a quick way for us to be able to get that information down on paper. Then if we want to neaten it up a little bit and reduce properly, square root of 0 is 0. 0 over 2 is 0. So this first term here for sine can be simplified to 0. Square root of 1 is 1. So this can be simplified to 1 half. Root 2 over 2, you'll generally see written as root 2 over 2. And same thing with root 3 over 2, because there's not much reduction that we can do there. But for root 4 over 2, the square root of 4 is 2. So this reduces to 2 over 2, which is 1 for that final term. And we can go through and do the same thing for our cosine values. Square root 4 over 2, that's 2 over 2, which is 1. Root 3 over 2 and root 2 over 2, we cannot reduce. Root 1 over 2, square root of 1 is 1, so we can simplify that to 1 half. And square root 0 over 2 simplifies to 0 over 2, and 0 over anything, as we mentioned, is 0. So now we see that we have this simplified chart that does show us the sine and cosine values for each of those radian measures in that first quadrant of our unit circle. And as long as we can remember to put everything over 2 and count 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 in that first sine column, then we'll be able to simplify those values and find the exact values as we see here 
in this chart, which is a much easier method rather than having to memorize 10 distinct different values for each of the radian measures for sine and cosine, and then when we go to apply those values to the other parts of our unit circle in the other quadrants, we'll only be changing a positive or a negative sign. So really, the difficult part is memorizing this first quadrant, and if we use that trick, it'll certainly make that task much easier. For questions or more information, please visit our website at www.sandersontestprep.com. The link is in the description below.